All right. Well, welcome again, everybody, to today's webinar. My name is Alex. I'm going to be hanging out with you here for a little bit. Uh, now, we do these webinars on a weekly basis, and uh, typically they go through different aspects of our software and how to do certain features or things. Uh, but today, what we're taking a look at is actually something a little bit more specific and directed towards nonprofits, and that is how to file a 990EZ using Aplo software. Uh, for those of you who have been around for a while, uh, you know that we offer multiple uh, software products to our customers, uh, one of which is this e-file product. We also have a donations management product, and we also have an accounting, a fund accounting product, which is kind of our flagship product. So uh, we offer a, a wide variety of things um, if you need them, but uh, specifically this e-file one is a free tool that you can use to file either the 990N or the 990EZ. So if you go to applos.com, which is our main website, and then down at the very bottom, you can click on the products thing of the, where it says Form 990 here. That will take you to that registration page where you can sign up for a free e-file account. And when you do, you will actually land here, which is our software. It's going to look a little bit different if you're just an e-file customer because you don't have accounting, so that wouldn't make any sense. But on the left-hand side, you still have this little navigation bar here. One of the tabs here is e-file. So when you click on that, you can click on Start New Filing, In Progress, or History. So let's start with start new filing. So at Apples, we are e-file providers, IRS approved e-file providers for the Form 990 series, which currently takes the place of two forms, and that is the Form 990N or the e-postcard or the 990EZ. There is a full form 990 as well, but we don't have an e-file uh, tool for that yet, uh, just for these two. So if you are a nonprofit that either makes less than $50,000 in gross receipts or gross income for the year, then you will file the Form 990N. But if you're between $50,000 and $200,000 in gross income for the year that you're filing for, or and or you have less than $500,000 in assets, then you will file the Form 990EZ, which is what we're taking a look at here today. Just a quick little note on the 990N and the 990EZ's pricing. The 990N is uh, it's typically it's a very, it's very, very short form. It basically asks, who are you? What's your organization? Did you go out of business? And did you make less than $50,000? That's about it. So you file that. And for the current year, which uh, it's 2016 now, um, I'll explain kind of the, the fiscal year thing here in a, in a second. But uh, typically, you're going to be filing for the previous year right now. So that'd be 2015. Uh, the current year is free. So if you need to file that, it's free for you. So uh, feel free to run through that if you need to. But any late or prior year returns are $19.99, so $20. Okay? And we can go two years back, which is 2014 and 2013. All right? For the 990EZ, what we're taking a look at here today, the pricing is $39.99 for all returns. And we can do two years. We can do 2015 and we can do 2014. Okay? But anything 2013 and prior uh, is not available. And that rolls off every year. So next year, 2017, we can do 16 and 15 and uh, so on. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like. So once you get into here, you can click on start a new 990, excuse me, 990 return. And I actually got one in progress, so I'm going to keep going there. Uh, and what we've built here is kind of a TurboTax kind of like wizard, which basically walks you through a bunch of questions and a bunch of fields that you'll enter information to, which will eventually populate your form. And then you can do a couple of things with that populated form. You can either e-file it to the IRS, because we are e-file uh, providers for that. So you can just send it electronically to them, and then you get a pretty quick uh, response from them on whether or not it was accepted. Or you can choose to print and mail it if you're maybe late or if you need to make some adjustments by hand, which we can talk about. Um, anyway, but you have those two options. But but really, until you get to that review and finish stage, you'll go through all of these steps here to kind of enter your information. Um, now, the benefit of what we've done here with Aplos is we've done a couple of things. One is we've added some in-context help. So in any of these questions or fields, if you don't know what it's asking for, you can click this little question mark here, and that's going to open up two different things, one of which is IRS guidance. So this is straight from their mouth of here is the, the text for this particular field, and here's the information. Or what we've done is we've gone through and kind of deciphered it a little bit. So then we have Aplos help. So we've taken the IRS guidance and we have made it 
more understandable for the average person <laughs> since anybody that's read in IRS form has probably gone cross-eyed once or twice. So uh, any one of those fields that you need help on, feel free to click the little question mark. That'll pop that up or click it to make it go away. Um, but for the most part, what we usually suggest is just to go through this step-by-step -step and um, just you know plug in the information that you uh, have access to. So your EIN first here. So you plug in your EIN, your employer identification number, that will certify you and whatever name gets brought up here is what the IRS has on file for you. If that is different or non-existent, then let us know and we can look into it. And then you choose your fiscal year. Now, a lot of people get confused on this. Uh, if you don't know what your fiscal year is, it should be on your articles of incorporation or some other official documentation that you have. But most people run on a calendar year fiscal year, which means January 1st is the beginning of your fiscal year. It's entirely possible to have that be something else, but most people run January 1st. Uh, now, the 990EZ is due on the 15th day of the fifth, fifth month of your fiscal year. Let me say that again. It's the 15th day of the fifth month of your fiscal year. So, if your fiscal year is January 1st, that means that your 990EZ is due May 15th, which is why we're doing this webinar. Get close to that date. Um, if you have a fiscal year start of February 1st, then the 15th day of the fifth month is June 15th, so on and so forth. So whatever your fiscal year date start is, uh, enter that here and then choose what year you're filing for. So 2015 or 14, choose that and then click save and continue. And then you move into organization info. So this is just your organization's address as well as any, any additional information you've got here. So has your mailing address changed? Is this the first time you're filing a return? Uh, have you been terminated your existence? Not like the movie. Uh, are you filing this return to amend a previous filed return? So some additional stuff there uh, and then some bookkeeper information. So go through here, enter that. Now let's see, this next one is the type of organization. So this is where you put in, I am a 501c whatever and or I am a uh, five, or chapter you know, 527 or 4947A1, uh, whatever your type of organization is, put that in there, as well as the form of your organization. So corporation, trust, association, and then what kind of accounting method do you use? So enter that as well, save and continue. And then the list of officers. So if you have any, feel free to enter those. I've got myself in there, title depends on the day, <laughs> save and continue. Uh, and then step two here is when you actually start now getting into the financial side of it. So org info is just very high level. Who are you? What's your name? What is your organization? Right. So financials here is now where you're going to need some information to start entering. So um, if you run through an accounting software, uh, whether it be Aplos or uh, whatever you use, there's two reports that you're going to want to generate. One is a balance sheet. So uh, get the balance sheet, get it to as of the end of your fiscal year. So uh, if, again, if you're on the January 1 fiscal year, then December 31st, 2015, grab that balance sheet and possibly the one for the beginning of the year as well. And then grab an income statement for that year as well, because that's going to be next. So, so what you'll enter here is your balance sheet. So here's your assets. Uh, and these, these categories here, by the way, and this entire form, just for whatever it's worth, this entire thing has been built on the IRS specifications. So if you have a uh, you know category on your balance sheet that doesn't fit what is asked for here, then you'll just have to fit it in wherever it makes the most sense. So, um, for instance, if you have a uh, like let's say you have a, a fixed asset for a car or something like that. Well, there's no automobile category here, but it's not land, it's not building, it's not cash. So it would just go in other assets. So just try to fit it in whatever works here. Um, but anyway, yeah, this, so, so this whole thing has been built on the IRS standards. So uh, here are the fields that you'll need to enter. But for your balance sheet, you'll put in what was it at the beginning of the year. <clears throat> so at the beginning of the year, I had $100,000 worth of cash savings and investments. Okay, And then I can enter the other assets as well. And then total lab liabilities. So any debt that we had at the beginning of the year. And then you'll enter the end of the year. So after a whole year passed, at the end of the year, I had 200000 and then no liabilities. So what that's going to tell the form now is when you go to the income statement, it's going to be looking for what makes up the difference between these two. Because if you've gained $100,000 worth of cash in the past year, we need to know where that comes from. And so does the IRS. Okay. So save and continue. And now here comes your income statement. Uh, 
So here is where you will also probably need to do some sort of manual um, you know, work around because your, your chart of accounts as far as your income and expenses are most likely going to be a lot different than what the IRS actually asks for. Um, so do your best. If, uh, if you'd like some help here, we have an income statement worksheet where you can kind of help plug things in and, and format it to what we need here for the form. But um, for the most part, you'd put in the info here. So let's say I got 200000 worth of contributions. And then I had $100,000 worth of expenses here for salaries. That gives me a net income of $100,000, which explains the difference between my two uh, balances there on the balance sheet. Now, if these were not uh, right, so let's say I put in you know, $150,000 here. Well, it's saying I had $150,000 worth of income and I had $100,000 worth of expense. So my net was $50,000. But on my balance sheet, I just told it that I had a difference of $100,000. So what it's going to do is tell you, you're missing something. So you told us that at the end of the balance sheet, there was $200,000, but this only adds up to $150,000. So where's the other fifty? dollars So that's where uh, this will help you kind of keep yourself in check a little bit. Um, because what we'll do is we'll automatically do these calculations, and so we can let you know when something doesn't add up or uh, you know if it's done the math wrong or something, um, we can let you know how that's playing out. So once the income statement matches up with the asset balance that you need for the end of the year, it will allow you to continue, so save and continue. And then you move into other info. And so this is just kind of like other stuff that they need to know. They've already got your financials. They know who you are, but this is just... What is your exempt purpose? Uh, what is your program service accomplishments? So this is kind of like, what, what do you do on a daily basis? What are your three largest programs? So describe them. What were their expenses? How much of these expenses were grants? Does this include foreign grants? So enter <clears throat> whatever you have there. And then click Save and Continue when you're finished. And then this one is uh, a lot of just kind of qualifiers. So these are just yes, no questions. So. Did you engage in any significant activity not previously reported to the IRS? No, or yes. And then if you click yes, there might be a description that you have to fill out. Or some of these might actually trigger different schedules as well. Because for the 990 Easy, you have the main form, the 990 Easy, and then you have these additional schedules. The number one reason why the 990s end up getting rejected from the IRS is because the people that filed them didn't attach or complete fully the required schedules. That is the largest reason <clears throat> why things get uh, returned. So that's another benefit to using Aplos here is we will automatically trigger those schedules that you'll need to complete based on the information that you've entered. So then when you go to the next step, which I'll show you here in a second, it'll say, hey, here are the schedules that you need to complete. And so you'll have to complete those before you can officially finish. Okay. So you go through here, answer these questions, yes or no. Uh, again, they might trigger uh, an explanation or different fields or another schedule or something. But um, yeah, go through here and answer all these. Now, if you go through here and you see a note that says APLOS Schedule C or a certain section is under maintenance, what that means is we were not able to complete it for this year. So unfortunately, there might be a couple of areas which are not available. Now, out of all of the customers that we've serviced, I think there's only been a handful that have actually encountered that because they are very kind of one-off use cases. But if that does happen, then what we recommend <clears throat> is still use Aplos. So still use this thing to complete the bulk of your form. What might have to happen, though, is instead of e-filing, you might need to print it and then schedule, you know, do Schedule C by hand and then mail everything in. Um, <clears throat> or there might be a little section that uh, you might just need to do by hand. But for the most part, you still benefit from being walked through this kind of wizard. It triggers all the schedules you need. It still does all the, the math for you. So there's still a lot of value to using the form, but uh, there just might be one or two things that you might need to change by hand. But <clears throat> anyway, so that's the other info. Go through that. And then the next two sections here are just the employees and their compensation, <clears throat> and then your highest paid contractors as well. Uh, more than 100000 for the year. Okay, so save and continue. So once you get through these three steps, that will populate the 990EZ. Okay, so that is done. You just did the 990EZ. <laughs> so now step four and beyond is asking for those additional schedules, information about you, the preparer, and then just the review and finish stage or step here in six. <clears throat> so any of these schedules that were triggered, they're going to be available to click here. So you'd click on Schedule A, for instance, and select which option you are. So again, here's another one of those little um, sections there that's under maintenance. Um, 
but for the most part, you'd check which one you are. And then if it needs you to do something more like here, um, uh, you know, if it's a community trust or something, then it says complete part two. So now when I click save and continue, it's going to take me to part two of the 990 or excuse me, of the schedule a. And so then I'll need to complete that. But if it doesn't ask you to trigger anything else like this first option does, let me go back here. There's that first one. Um, so once I click that, then what that does is just says, okay, that's all we need to know for Schedule A, uh, but now you might have to do Schedule B. And so now you click on Schedule B and complete that. So go through all the schedules that you need to complete. Once you're done, then it'll have all of them uh, listed for you here on this screen and you click Save and Continue. And then that goes to the preparer information, which again is just info about whoever's preparing the form, whether it's you or somebody else, put that in. And then this is a section for paid preparers only as well. Oops, I need to put that in. So Alex Kidoki. Fine. Save and continue. Oh, come on. Cool. Okay, and then the next one here is the officer. So this is the officer who authorizes this form to be submitted to the IRS. So if this is different than the preparer, then go find that officer, get them to enter their information here. So I'll just say that that's me. Title, uh, no, no, employee. Save and continue. Okay, so that completes step five. So step one, you enter your org info. Step two is financials, so balance sheet income statement. Step three is other info, lots of yes, no questions and different things you need to trigger. Step four is the additional schedules. Step five is who's preparing and who authorizes this. And then step six <clears throat> is the finish. So here is where you would typically enter your credit card to be charged to $39.99. Uh, I already have a charge applied to this account, so I can move on to the save and continue phase here of review. And then in this review phase, it'll say, so here's what you're eventually going to do for your return. Here is your return. You've got the easy, schedule A, schedule B, and then schedule O. Schedule O is just <clears throat> everything else. So if there's a question that asks you to put in a description or something, that gets populated on schedule O. So it's just kind of bonus. You don't need to do anything there. Uh, you can also click on this and see how it looks. So here's my populated form with all that info that I just put in there. See, you don't have to decipher this and do it by hand. It can all be done by software for you. Uh, and then if everything looks good, you can then mark your return as complete, but you can also go back and edit it at any time if you'd like as well. But once it's done, click mark return as complete, or yeah, mark return as complete. And then you have this final stage, which is file. So you have two options, like I mentioned earlier. You have option one, which is e-filing with the IRS. And in order to do that, we need to have you download, sign, and then upload this form, which is the authorization form. And just by the way, make sure to pay attention to the types of files that this can be. PDF is not one of them. <laughs> it must be a JPEG, GIF, or PNG. If you uh, don't know what any of that means or need some help saving to the right format, just send us what you have, whether it be PDF or Word or whatever, and then we can get you the right format for it, send it back to you. And then once you upload that, then you can click e-file, in which once you have that uploaded, there will be an e-file button, which you can click it, and then that will send it to the IRS. If they accept it or reject it, you'll get an email, <clears throat> but either way, you will know. Uh, option two is the mail printed form to the, nine, nine, <clears throat> to the IRS. So here's where you can download mailing instructions. So this tells you, here's who you need to mail it to, here's what you need to do, uh, and then you can download all of those forms there for either manual updating, so again, if you need to kind of do something by hand, you can, or just print everything and mail it off whenever you need. Okay. Uh, either way, if there's the e-file button, click it. If you're going to mail it, then click this, because that then tells the system that the return is done, and I have made the decision to either e-file or mail. And then at that point, you can go to your history section here and see the status of your e-file history. Uh, and then if you need to do another return or if you need to um, you know, make changes to one that's, that's already in progress, you can either start a new filing or use the in progress section here to continue working on a return. Uh, either way, this e-file software can be used for as many as returns as you need it to do. 
Alrighty. Well, that's all that I can think to say about that currently. So what I'd like to do is open it up for some question and answer time. Uh, so if you have any questions for me, feel free to shoot those through. I'm going to mute myself for just a, a couple of minutes and then see what questions you've got. Um, for those of you who are watching this after the fact, um, we're going to stop the recording now. But if you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at aplos.com or when you're logged into Aplos or on our website, there's a little question mark oops, Sorry, here at the bottom right of the browser. And if you click that, it'll actually open up a conversation that you can have with our support team. So you would submit a question to us. We will then respond when we are available, which is typically pretty quick. Um, and then we can kind of chat through that. So, okay, well, uh, let me mute myself for just a minute or two, and then I'll be back to answer your questions. Mm -hmm.